Jesus said, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And you, you are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O oh Christ. Christ. Here is one of my favorite icons of the Ascension. It's an Orthodox icon depicting Jesus being carried up into heaven, surrounded by the disciples. To borrow a phrase from a recent New York Times piece that you might be familiar with, today is one of those days when, quote unquote, Christianity gets weird. It's Ascension, the 40th day of Easter. And I definitely did not grow up celebrating, commemorating, or doing much thinking at all about the Ascension in the more evangelical churches I grew up in. We knew it was in the Bible, and we had some vague idea that it was when Jesus somehow left earth and went back up into heaven after he had risen from the dead. But there were never really sermons on ascension texts, and we definitely did not have a whole day for the ascension like we do and like many other liturgical traditions do. And really, you can't blame them, honestly, for not having a whole day devoted to it. Because when you stop and think about it, it's a little strange, isn't it? I mean, don't get me wrong, I get that resurrection is strange, period. Uh, but so is the ascension, right? Jesus going back up into heaven by floating up. Uh, I kind of actually like that about it, though, that it's weird. I was talking with my brother about how I was preaching today, and we talked about how we both actually kind of like it because it's one of those weird days centered on one of those weird stories of our faith. A kind of out there, a little sci-fi, and actually sort of funny. So I even decided to do a quick Google search of Ascension memes. And uh, here are a few uh, that I found. And yes, that is a reference to Elton John, and I've always wanted to reference Elton John in one of my sermons, so check on that. Uh, there's, more, there's more out there, too. You could do your own research later, and I don't know if any of you saw the meme that someone posted in the Holy Trinity Facebook group the other day uh, about Ascension being the day when Jesus decided to work from home, uh, but if not, you should totally check that out. To be fair, the New York Times article was talking about the Latin Mass. Uh, but this is just 
Bible story weird. Ascension is one of those times when Christianity gets weird. Our texts are filled with phrases like, God has gone up with a shout. Jesus being taken up into heaven. Jesus being carried into heaven. Phrases like, God has now been seated at God's right hand in heavenly places. This weird Bible story, much like the memes that have been made about it, and the beautiful icon, they seem to be implying that Jesus has gone vertical, right? Up into heaven, which many of us think of as beyond space or another realm. And we think that he has stayed there. We even might instinctively point up when referencing heaven or where Jesus is to be found post-ascension. When I was preparing for today, I was reminded of a sermon that one of my late professors from the Lutheran School of Theology, Vitor Vestella, preached on ascension. He points out an interesting image in our Acts reading. As the disciples are staring up into heaven, one of the men in white robes, one of the angels, says, why are you staring into heaven? This Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. To that promise that Jesus will come again in the same way, Professor Vestella points out that this actually reveals something about Jesus' presence now, that he has ascended. And actually where Jesus is to be found post-ascension. Professor Vestella reminds us that Jesus, when he came among us the first time, before his ascension, he came to the poor and the forgotten, the lonely and the isolated, the discouraged and the dispossessed, the hopeless and the struggling, born to a teenage mother, eating with sinners and tax collectors, and eventually to a Roman cross outside the city. Before his ascension, in his life and ministry, God in the flesh stooped down toward us into all that it means to be human, the nitty and gritty of our lives. This is the way that Jesus still comes. With this in mind, Professor Vestella titled his ascension sermon poignantly, The Glory Down Below. But true, all of this about Jesus coming in the same way, it may sound to us a little flat right now. It may sound a bit disconnected from where we live. Or a promise that is only for then or for later. After all, I'll be honest, it's not as easy to sense Jesus' presence with us these days. Or at least that's true for me. Jesus may be up there, but down here, I, I'm just not so sure. For me, one of the clearest signs of Jesus' presence down here is gathering with you all at 1218 West Addison or 637 South Dearborn singing with holy abandon and smelling incense and feeling the water from our very font wash over our bodies, seeing and tasting Jesus in our hands, in bread and wine, and in the embrace of a friend or stranger during the peace. Jesus has ascended, but come again in the same way now? We got word on Thursday and Friday that 38.6 million people have filed for unemployment since the pandemic began in the US. Some of us have felt that sting of those numbers close to home. But I imagine even if we haven't felt it directly, we still feel the residual anxiety and fear of the unknown. Jesus has ascended, but come again in the same way now? There are so many losses 
that we are all grieving right now. Not just economic losses, not just loss of in-person worship, but loss of time with friends and family, loss of time with teachers and coaches and teams, loss of in-person milestones like graduations. Mine was on Zoom last week. And weddings, we had to postpone ours. And so many people are missing out on in-person funerals at this time. And we've all lost a sense of normalcy and of routine. It's like we're sitting at home in a fog that never seems to break and a fog that we cannot escape, literally, because we're in a stay-at-home order. Jesus has sure ascended, but has he come again in the same way now? Then there is, as one preacher put it this week at the Festival of Homiletics, the way that COVID-19 is revealing and unveiling systems and structures of white supremacy and of inequality and of racism that were once more easily hidden, but now have been put out in the open for all to see. Jesus has ascended, but has he come in the same way now? And we have so many questions right now. Good questions, honest questions, painful questions about God's presence in the midst of so much suffering. A New York Times headline about 100,000 people at least dead from COVID-19. Jesus has ascended. But has he come again in the same way now? I'm not so sure. But it's in the midst of that, in the midst of our real lives, holding nothing back, that we hear these words break forth anew this morning. In our Ephesians reading, we hear that the fullness of Jesus now fills all in all. That Jesus is seated at the right hand of God, which Luther says is everywhere and fills all things. And we remember a different gospel, and actually the text of our gospel acclamation this morning, that before his ascension, Jesus promises that he will be with us always. With that, we hear the promise of the angel again. Jesus will come again in the same way and be with us, stay with us, the same way he came before. Jesus has come again and again and continues to abide among us, like our gospel has said the last couple of weeks. In the midst of the messy and mundane of your life and mine. Weirdly and paradoxically, the promise of the ascension is that Jesus is still with us. That the crucified Jesus with his wounds who has risen has set up shop with us, or as one writer has said, moved into the neighborhood and continues to walk by our side, holding your hand. And even more weirdly, as our gospel says, and as our Acts reading says, we, we are witnesses of these things. You are witnesses of and to these things, church. You are the body of Christ in the world. You are witnesses for one another and for our world that the risen and ascended Jesus is still among us and with us here and now, even when it's so hard to believe it. When you show up for one another, whether it is through Zoom or a phone call, FaceTime or a handwritten note just to listen or be present or cry with another. You, in your body, are a witness that the body of the risen and ascended Jesus is still here. 
when you socially distance and wear a mask to support the most vulnerable and love your neighbor in tangible ways, you are a witness to these things as the body of the risen and ascended Jesus. He is still here. When you share a part of your story, like Dan will in a few minutes, you are a witness to the reality that the risen and ascended Jesus is still here in our midst. When you do anti-racism work and when you advocate for those who've been oppressed for far too long, you are a witness to the way that Jesus first came and the way that Jesus continues to show up and you show. The risen and ascended Jesus is still here by your own witness. When you continue to meet online until it is safe for all of God's children to come together, the risen and ascended Jesus is still here and you are a witness to these things. And through this community, virtual community in our homes yet together, around the word of life, we hear the words of Jesus spoken again and again, words of presence and of promise and of mercy for you and for you and for you each day new. And continue to be witnesses to these things. And to our God who is still here, especially now, especially here, especially in the midst of this. So today is certainly a day when Christianity gets a little weird. That's true. And a day that has indeed inspired some great memes, but also a day marked by promise. Promise that this Jesus, crucified, risen, and ascended, is here in our midst. And we are witnesses to these things. So don't look up, but look out and look to one another. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.